Welcome back to a series about Stories, the most amazing creative writing app for Mac OS and iOS. And in this video, I'm going to talk about how to save your document and how to save versions of your document. So uh, every software that we use has usually two types of two ways of saving a current document. And one is file save and one is file save as. And literally anything has that, it be it an image manipulation program, video editing software, text processing software, any, any software ha has these, has, well, any software package has these two types of saving a document. And the difference between them, just so that we're on the same page here, is that file save or like command S on the keyboard will save whatever is currently in memory to the hard drive. So if you've made any changes, they're not persisted on the hard drive until you press command S or file save. And at that point, the file that's currently on the hard drive is being overwritten with the changes that you've made in the document. That's how that works. And then the other option, file save as, it does essentially the same, but it doesn't over save the current file that's on the hard drive, it creates a new file. So usually when you start a new document, then there's no file on the hard drive and anything that you do happens in memory until you then at least once select file save as, and then you give it a file name and that is then persisting whatever is currently in memory onto the hard drive. And as soon as you make a change, you have to hit command S to make those changes you know, get written down. And uh, that's usually sufficient for most types of software, but it can get tricky and critical when you're using the same file for a long period of time. So uh, there's kind of the, those, the, there's a limitation that if you're using a precious document that you're writing on, like a big text document, and you're writing on it for two, three months, and uh, you oversave the same file several times a day. What happens when that file gets corrupt? I mean, we're dealing with computers here, so at, sooner or later, something will go wrong. We can pretty much be sure of that. And uh, if, if that happens, then you'll lose all your work. So that's a consideration that uh, something like the Time Machine backup system will alleviate or a cloud service will alleviate because as soon as you hit save, your file is being populated to a cloud service like Dropbox or iCloud and the, the changes are made somewhere else. But if that file is corrupt, then the corruption is also going to be populated to those various other servers. So that doesn't really help you out. Time Machine, on the other hand, will help out because it saves several versions. So if your file corrupts now, then an hour ago, it's likely that it wasn't corrupt, at which point it may have already saved a version that wasn't corrupt at that point. So, you know, something to think about. If you're currently not using something like Time Machine, do look into it. It does alleviate this burden that you know some corruption could happen there a lot and you also have kind of automatic versions going back there's something that people do in order to kind of see their work growing and that is that they regularly maybe once at the end of each day or once a week or something they do create another version of their file using the save as option and then they usually just increment a number at the end of the file so that means you end up with a lot of files at the end of the day and you always have i guess the latest version the one with the highest number at the end is the is the current one the most up-to-date one but if something has gone wrong you can then go back and that's a very valuable way of doing it because that gives you lots and lots of files should the most recent one corrupt you always have one to go back to that's that's one way of doing it but when it comes to the creative process you might sometimes wander down an avenue and you think ah i've written this new character into my story i don't really like where this is going i wish i could go back to a version in which i had uh, before I had started writing that character in. So I can just kind of start with a clean slate. And neither option is good for that because it doesn't really leave you room to do that. So uh, what software programmers use is something called version control to alleviate that. Because with software development, you often just change a single line of code, but you do that not in one file, but in multiple files. And so that you can try out a new scary feature that you're not quite sure if it's going to make it into the production version, they use this thing called version control. And there's several uh, pieces of software that make that happen. The most popular is Git, and they have a, their own website called GitHub, and that is where you can easily copy a, a whole software repository to. And um, 
I don't want to clue you in on all the details here. I don't want to overload you with anything. But in principle, what that allows you to do is uh, the Git service is operated on the um, system level. So to the finder, uh, it appears to be the same file the moment you hit save. But then the version control system recognizes this is a different file to what you've just saved. And it allows you, that's kind of a separate piece of software that you need for that, that allows you to make a comment and say, this is what I've changed here. And then you can do what's known as a commit and save that file, stash it in a safe place. So the version control software will take care of that so that you can retrieve it at a later date. And that system is great, but it requires a second kind of program to manage those things. And uh, Storyist has something like that built in. So um, that is something we're going to talk about in this video. Um, and of course, the other way of saving something, it works a little bit different in Storyist. So I'm going to show you how that works. So essentially, we're talking about three things, file save, file save as, and we're talking about saving a version. And uh, let's start there. Let's let's start. Let's start with all these three things. So uh, first of all, uh, Stories has that when you go up to file save, it has the same thing that that we know and love from other software packages, and it uses the same shortcut key, which is Command S, to oversave the current file on the hard disk. And uh, I personally like to write on more than one device, so I'm using Dropbox for that. Stories supports Dropbox as well as iCloud. iCloud is Apple's kind of cloud service, and the Dropbox service, well, that's an independent company, but they give you, I think, about five gigabytes worth of space for free, and you get it pretty much for every platform. So um, that's that makes my life a lot easier. I'm working on a desktop, I'm working on a laptop, so as soon as, soon as I save my file in a Dropbox folder, it is possible populated on both my desktop and my laptop. So as soon as I open my laptop, all the changes I've made on my desktop are happening there. And uh, when we're talking about iOS, that becomes even more important so that you can sync up both platforms, iOS and Mac OS. But we'll talk about that in another video. So for now, just know that file save exists just like it does in any other software. What does not exist in Stories is file save as. So you can have a look at that menu, save as just doesn't exist here. So uh, what happens is when you save a file for the first time, it will give you the option to give it a file name. So by default, it's called an untitled file. And the moment you hit save for the first time, Stories will prompt you for a file name and for a location of where you want to save that file. So I've saved mine in Dropbox, as I said. And if I've made a change, which I just have, it comes up with this message at the top here. It says edit it. And that means I've made a change that is now in memory that's not yet on the hard drive. And as soon as I hit file save, that message is going away and you can see my little drop box icon syncing and now it's finished and now everything has been uploaded to the cloud. That's, that's how I like it. That's exactly how I like it. But if you wanted to save a separate file somewhere else uh, or something like, you know, I'm, kind of, I'm calling mine here screencast.story. If I wanted to save that as screencast2 because I'm not sure if I wanted to have a second file on the same hard disk, then there is no way to do that with file save as. So what you have to do in story is this, you have to use the duplicate command. And that almost does the same except for the way it works is when you hit it, then you see that another window appears. So now uh, I have two windows open and this one is now called screencast copy and it's an exact copy of the other file and it's not safe. So look, it's, it just calls this untitled screencast copy. So I can go into here and then uh, give it another name if I wanted to. So I'm gonna call it perhaps the screencast two and I'll just hit return. And uh, at that point, it will be saved as a different file. So this is now essentially, if you're familiar with version control, this is now a branch at the end of the day. But those two files are two separate entities on the hard drive. So if I want these changes, I'm going to have to open that file. And if I want these changes, I'm going to have to open the other file. Or rather this file, screencast two. So that's one way of doing it. And so just in, in lieu of file save as, this is what you have to do. You have to say file duplicate that will create literally a second project for you. And then you can name that project whatever you like. 
And that's if you're used to working that way, you can, it's no problem. But Storyist also offers something that is even more convenient. I mean, it's kind of a built-in version control system. So let's talk about that next. I'm gonna close my screencast2 file and I'm gonna stick with my original screencast file here. And I'm gonna scroll to the bottom and perhaps I'll take a few empty lines out and I'm gonna create a chapter three here. So I'll call it chapter three. This is where my third chapter would begin. Let's just say that. And I'm gonna park my cursor in here like we had before and I'm gonna call this a chapter title and that will now as we said before it's going to come up with that little disclosure triangle for my third chapter here and i've got um i've got my text here and i've even misspelled wood again like you know keeping uh, in line with all the with all the rest of the videos let's uh, bring in some lorem text here so that it looks a little bit more um, beefy and juicy perhaps give it an empty line here perfect so if I wanted to save a version of my file, I can do that. And this, this is kind of a version control philosophy that is taken care of by the actual cloud provider. So this only works if you're saving your file in the so-called cloud, which is a terrible, terrible term, I think, because the cloud's the white fluffy thing in the sky. It has nothing to do with remote computers. And I don't like the term because it suggests that the cloud is something I'm not exactly aware of how it works. And I don't really care at the same time. I, I, I detest that kind of attitude. I'm thinking, you know, there are remote computers, people talk to them and you talk to them as soon as you run as a different discussion altogether let's let's not go there so anyway uh, my point is if you want to use this version system that stories has to offer then your file has to be saved in the cloud which is either dropbox or icloud and then you can come up over here to the file menu and you can see these two options here save a version and show previous versions and these are very important so if i go ahead and save a version now this is slightly different than hitting Control s because it allows me to this little dialog comes up and it allows me to save a version and uh, i can make a note uh, added chapter three for example and uh, then I can save a version. And when I do that, this is now a separate file that is being saved, but it's still being kind of tracked by the current file that I'm using. And if I go over to file, show a previous version or show previous versions rather, then I can see here that this is the version I've just created, which is added chapter three. And Stories has also kindly created some automatic versions here. So these are the things that um, Stories creates automatically. And it does this, it's kind of like an auto save feature, but it's kind of an auto versioning feature. So while you're typing away for hours and you don't really keep track of how much you've typed and how many versions you're making, Stories will do that in the background for you. And this allows you to either restore a version, remove a version or save a version from here, or you can also open a copy of your version. So if I wanted to go back to a version like this one here, automatically save version, I can open this as a copy. I don't have to open this and more or less kind of overwrite my current changes and bring that back even though it wouldn't matter because I have another version stashed there, uh, I can open a copy. So if I do that, then I can see that something very similar to previously happens. I have now two windows open here. One that's the current, the, the, this one is the version that I've just opened. And this one is my original still. And you can see that this one does not have a chapter three. And this allows me to open something and read what changes have I made if my comment is not quite clear enough. I mean, that's what the comment window is there for, that you can quickly clarify why have I saved the version and what's different. Like, you know, in this version, perhaps um, Dave and Mary have not broken up and I try to explore that on paper and I realize actually it's much funnier if they try to break up and um, they were unsuccessful and now Dave is kind of um, trapped in this relationship that he doesn't really want to be in. And in another version, I may have explored them having broken up and now he's heartbroken and thinks actually I really like her back. And But depending on how the writing goes, you can't really predict often uh, what is going to be a funny story. So that's what versions allow you to do. Let me just uh, close that 
window and I'm going to say no don't save that that's the version that I just brought back um, and uh, so yeah that's how that works that's how versions work I encourage you to explore this and play around with it in a test document and see what you think about it for me versions is very nice because I'm a software developer myself and I'm used to version control and seeing that integrated so deeply into the writing software it means again I don't have to go to another piece of software and employ that I hope you liked it. Uh, if you uh, found this video useful, then please share it with friends, family, and total strangers. Recommend the whole series to them. And do give stories to go. If you have any questions, please let me know. And I'll see you in the next video. Take care.